Hello, today we are going to make uh, box and whisker plots in Excel version 2003, a little bit dated. Um, it can be done using a stacked bar chart, column chart, and then we have to modify it so it looks like a box and whisker. In the end, this is the result, and so I'll take you through the steps to uh, get you here. So we'll start fresh. Here's our, um, our two sets of data. Imagine that we want to uh, compare two s different tests, test A and test B. So here are the marks for test A, the marks for test B. So these are the minimum Q1, uh, median Q3, and the max, and the same for test B. Now, because we're going to use a stacked bar chart, we need the differences. So the median, we're actually going to plot the differences. The median uh, or sorry, the differences will begin with the minimum, so just type in 34 here and 47 here. And then from here on, we need the differences. This will be the difference of these two, this will be the difference of these two, and so on. So in this uh, cell, we just type equals, and that's going to be D4 minus D3. Oops. Uh, I made a mistake. It's uh, C4 minus C3. Let's try that again. C4 minus C3. And we got our difference. And we can just do that for the rest of them. We should be able to copy that down. And C5 minus C4. And there we go. Now again, we already have the 47 for our test B. We can copy these and paste them here. And now we have all the differences for test set B. Uh, when we graph it, so we actually graph these, and by holding down the control button, I can select these as well. So when I have the two differences, I can now graph it, and I'm going to choose a, a bar chart, and I'm going to choose the second one, which is a, a stacked bar chart, and I'll say next. Now, this isn't right at all. Uh, what we actually need is we need to do it in the rows instead, and that's the way it should look. And then we'll transform that into our two box and whisker plots. So we just go next. Our title can be test A versus test B. Um, our category Y, which will actually show up on the horizontal axes, will just be marks. And we're going to get rid of the, uh, the 1 and the 2 later. Yeah, so we can just complete that. And here's what we have. And so now we have to transform this. You can kind of see the box and whisker plot now. This is actually the, the box. And the whiskers will go here. And essentially, we're just going to get rid of uh, this, these first bars here. Um, so actually. We can actually do that now. If we click on, if we ever click on these ones, then it'll just select the two series. But if we click on them a second time, then it, I can actually select the individual kind of stacked bar. So we're going to do that. And now we're just going to make these invisible. So by right clicking on it, once it's selected, then I can say no border, no color, and it's gone. And I'll do the same thing for this one. Right click, no border, no color, and it's gone. Okay, so now we just need to essentially make these into whiskers instead. And the way that we do that is if we, if we just click on it once, you can see that both of these series, it says series two, is selected. If we right click on, on them and format data, then there's this thing called the Y error bars. In the Y error bars, we want the minus for the one that goes to the left, and we're going to use the plus for the one that goes to the right. So with the, uh, the whisker, what's going to become the whisker, select it. I go to my Y error bars, and I select the minus. Now when I have the minus selected, I need to tell it how big the whiskers are going to be. And I'm going to use the custom. 
If I do it right now, the whiskers both, both will be 20 long. But if I do a custom, and because it's a minus, I have to fill it with the minus bar here, I uh, actually want to click on this. And when I click on that, I'm going to choose my, my Q1 data for both of them. So I'm going to click on this, and I come up here and I choose my Q1 data, which is the 11, and then I choose my Q1 data for the differences for my test B, and I'm holding control now, and I select the 7, and I hit enter, and that puts those two cells in as the how big I want my minus bars, which is going to be one of my whiskers, and I hit OK. So you can actually see now there's a whisker where that stacked bar usually is. Um, now all we need to do is hide the color for that bar, and we'll just see the whisker. So again, click on it once and twice, right click, and format, no border, no color, okay, and there's my whisker. Do that same thing for this, once, twice, right click, format data points, no border, no color, and, and there we have it. You can see it transforming into a box and whisker plot. Now we need to make the other whisker, which is this one, and this is going to be another error bar, but it's actually going to be an error bar for the, um, this data here. So we actually select on, on this one. So don't select this, but select this one. Because it's going to be a positive, it's going to add it on to this, to this one here. So when it's selected once, right click, format data series, and again go to Y bar, error bars. This time it's a plus, and I'm going to do a custom. And this time when I do the custom, I'm going to choose my, um, my max data. So I, it has to be in the plus, because I want it to be a plus for this whisker. I must choose the plus here. And when I do that, I'm now going to choose my max. So I choose the 19 and the 14, and hit Enter. And when I do that and hit OK, I'll now see my other whiskers. And now the last step is to get rid of these other two bars. And once, click once, click twice, right click, format, no border, no color. Do it again here. One, click once, click twice, right click, format, no border, no area, OK. And now it really looks like a box and whisker plot. But we don't really like how it's got two different colors. Um, so what we're going to do is we're just going to make the, we're going to force these to be the same color. Maybe we'll make both of these uh, yellow and both of these green. So if I do that, I click on it once, click on it twice, right click, and I will now go into the color. Now I wanted it yellow, and I think it's probably this color. Hit OK. Oh, wrong color. Let's try that again. Um, it looks like it's maybe this color. No. There we go, I found it. And so th that looks nice. And now we're going to make this bar here a green to match that one. And I believe it's this green. And that looks good. Okay, so now we're almost done. A uh, couple things. Let's get rid of the one and two here. That doesn't make too much sense. So if we just Right click on that, format axes, and we'll just say um, no ticks, none, no tick marks, no lines. Uh, oops, actually, we should leave the line there, I guess. Let me undo that. So let's try that again. Right click, format axes, we'll leave the line, no tick mark, no labels. That's better. Uh, because these represent our marks. So. And the only other thing that we'd like to do is let's get rid of this. This doesn't make any sense. So essentially what we do is we're going to get rid of series 1, 2, and 5. We're going to keep 3 and label it um, this test, which is the, which test is this? This is test B. And then we're going to keep series 4 and we're going to label it test A. So if you just click on these, click on it a second time, you can just hit delete. Click on it once and twice and hit delete. Click on Series 5 once and twice, hit Delete. That's looking better. Now Series 3, uh, this is my test B marks. So 
and the only way you can change those titles is actually if you right click here on this white area and you go to data source when you go to data source now and series those were series three and four so series three when we click on it we can choose a name let me do this over here now series three We'll choose the name, because series three was test B, then we'll type in test B here. And just hit out. And then actually we can change series four to be name test A. And hit OK. And that's much better. And so there you have it. We have our box and whisker plot. Uh, we can now take this and copy it into Word and paste it into our final report. And uh, we can see we have the min and the max. We have the median, and the box goes around all the data from Q1 to Q3. And that's how you do a box and whisker plot in Excel 2003. I believe in the later versions of Excel, like 2010, that's uh, built right in. And um, that's the best way that I've found to make a box and whisker plot in this version of Excel.